Ready? Story. Once there was a rich man. He dealt in diamonds. And he heard that uh, there was another rich man that was closing his business and he was selling really, really cheap <clears throat> to the first seller, to the first buyer. He checked it out. He sent men to find out if it's true. It was really true. <clears throat> and he talked it over with his wife. His wife said, it's a wonderful idea. You should do it. It meant that he had to sort of liquidate all of his assets. And uh, he had to get on a boat to cross over this small river. It was like a half an hour drive, half an hour sail. It was a barge that went over the river. And he would go to this person. The person lived in, I don't know, Prague or someplace, near the, wherever the river was. So he asked his wife. His wife said yes. So they, they, he said, but, but first of all, he's going to go and ask one of the tzaddikim. There were the two brothers, Rev Eli Melech Milizinsk, Rev Zushimanipoli. So he went to Rev Zushimanipoli, and he asked him um, if he should go. And Rev Zushimanipoli said, you should definitely not go. It's not going to be good. So he went back home to his wife, and he said, that's it. The trip is off. His wife said, what? The trip is off. Why is it off? He said, I went to Zusha Manipoli, and he told me that I shouldn't go. He said, ah, Zusha Manipoli, you know, he's a big tzaddik. He knows how to learn. He knows how to do this, but he understands business. I mean, did you tell him all the details? He said, no, as soon as I, I just mentioned that I wanted to go over, he said, don't go. So his wife started nudging him. He said, listen, we sent men to check it out. Everything is 100%. You're a businessman. He's not a businessman. We know who the man is. It's a, it's a sure thing. <clears throat> you should do it. He said, but I can't go against the Rebbe. Reb Zusha told me not to go. She said, well, listen, Reb Zusha has a brother. His Rebbe's name is Rebbe Ellen Melech. So he says to his wife, what, what are you trying to say? Over here? What, what, what are you trying to say? I already asked the Tzadik. If I should go, he told me no. I mean, I, he said, you go to his brother, Eli Melech, and you tell him that you asked his brother Zusha, and his brother said no, and tell Rabbi Elimelech that your wife is driving you crazy, and you're asking him. So I said, okay. So he drags himself over to Rabbi Elimelech, Yulizinsk, and he tells him the whole story. I, I have this wonderful business opportunity, or so I thought, and I went to your brother, he told me not to go, and my wife said that I should come to you. I, I don't want to go against your brother. And Rev. Eli Miller said, my brother told you not to go? He said, yeah. And you're coming to me? He said, yeah, well, what, what can I do? I mean, my, my wife said, well, I'm telling you, you should go. He said, really? He says, yes. He said, but your brother? He says, I know. My brother said you should. But my brother, he only saw, he saw up to the river. And I see after the river. He said, oh, okay, good. So he goes back over his wife. Big smile on his face. His wife said, no, what happened? So his wife said, see, I told you. He said, yeah, you're right. Reb Eli Melech said that I should go. That's really great. You should go. I said, well, did he give a reason? Did you tell him about what his brother said, Reb Zusha? He says, yeah, I told him. And he told me that Reb Zusha saw only up to the river and that he sees after the river. His wife says, well, isn't that just wonderful? This is just so fantastic. We're going to go. We're going to make it. I said, well, what does that mean? What does it mean up to the river? He said, I have absolutely no idea. I don't know what it means. But he told me to go. And she said, is that all he said? He said, no. He said one more thing, Rev. Rev. Eli Melech. He asked me if I was a mohel, if I was knew how to make circumcision. I said, yeah, I do. He said, well, I want to give you a, a special uh, powder that stops all bleeding. And you can make it from household things. Right? A, a, a certain, the, the thing is how much you use. A little bit of coffee, a little bit of sugar, cinnamon, whatever it is, normal household items. And you can make this powder to stop bleeding. So he taught me how to do it. And I did it. Uh, why he couldn't give me some of the powder himself, I don't know. But that's what he taught me to do. So I remembered how to do it. Good. No one could hear you or see you. Like we could see you but not hear you. What? You got stuck. 
I'm sorry. You were stuck. What does that mean? I, I, I think the internet connections in Israel are kind of iffy today, probably because of the heat. Hi, hi. But the fact that he's having a problem with his internet connection. I had one. You might be having one even though you don't realize it. Anyway, um, just continue. Second, Maybe you have a story. <laughs> one minute. Did the story get broken up? I heard yeah. the whole story. I'm recording it. I, I've got the whole story so far. Okay, good. I'll okay. find out what happens with this mystery powder. Okay, I'm continuing the story. And then afterwards, you can look. He's, he's recording the whole story. So I'll, you can, I'll, I'll be putting it up on YouTube and on Facebook. Yeah. So he liquidates, this rich man liquidates all of his money that he's got. And he has big bunches of money. And he has a, uh, he has a what is it called, a, a, a money belt. And he puts the money in there and he wraps it up, of course, the money. So that's all. <clears throat> and he goes and he even has a gun so nobody will hurt him. Nobody will this or anything. And he gets on the, on the, goes to the boat. It's a beautiful night. Everything is so calm. <clears throat> he gets on the boat. He's traveling. He thinks to himself, why did Reb Zusha tell me not to go? Something very interesting. They're about half a way through the journey. It's only a half an hour journey across this bridge, across this river, rather. And suddenly, all of a sudden, from nowhere, it starts a wind starts to blow. And the wind blows, and the, the river starts to churn more and more. And it's difficult for the boat to, to, con to continue. It's blowing right toward the boat. And the boat starts to turn. Suddenly, there's this big crunch. A big loud noise the boat hits some sort of a rock or something and before he knows it he's in the water and the river is rushing it's it's going fast the wind is blowing and it's dark and it's cold and the wind is blowing and the water the rushing water finally he finds this miraculously this piece of wood and he grabs onto it and the piece of wood it just takes him down the river and he he uh, it gets caught in something the rib, and the, he's just holding onto this piece of wood, and the river takes off all of his clothes. It removes all of his clothes that he's got, and he's screaming, help Hashem, please help me. And with his last powers, he crawls on this branch. He moves himself little by little to the shore, and he gets on the shore. He gets to the shore. It's freezing cold. He's in the mud on the shore. He's bare naked, has absolutely nothing. What's he going to do? Where is he going to go? And it's already starting to get late at night. And he sees there's a house far away. So he runs to the house. It's already like one in the morning. Who knows? He knocks on the door. Help, please. Throw a blanket out the window. You don't have to let me in. Just throw a blanket out the window. I'm freezing cold. Suddenly a little hole opens up. And the, the man inside says, Du bist Yid? Are you Jewish? He says, yeah opens up the door, gives him a, a blanket, wraps him in the blanket, he falls down and he faints. <clears throat> he has his servants, this rich guy, it's a rich, rich guy, uh, takes him, has his servants take him to the, wash him up, dry him up, put him in the bed, wakes up in the next morning. He said, oh, it's a miracle, I'm alive. All of a sudden he starts to cry and weep. Boy, I lost all of my money. I lost everything. I should have listened to Reb Zusha. I knew it. I knew it. I lost everything I got. And but thank God I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Thank you. You've saved my life. He said, this rich, the rich man says, Reb Zusha, which Reb Zusha? He says, I come from the other, from this town over there, Anipolia. He says, you know Reb Zusha? He says, yes. And uh, you know his brother, uh, Reb uh, Elimelech? He said, yes. I hear that they're big tzaddikim. I hear they were very holy people. You think it's worthwhile for me to go to see them? Said, of course, they're very holy people. What's the question? And he says, I've got this really big problem. And I don't know what to do. He says, I'm not one of these Hasidic Jews with these Rebbe's and things like that. I don't, I'm a normal Jew, but I've got this big problem. And I heard that maybe, listen, I'll, oh, what's the problem? He says, listen, my problem is I, my sons, I, I, I had one son. I have three sons. One of the sons was circumcised and he died from bleeding. And now nobody wants to touch the sons. They say that they have some sort of a bleeding problem, something like hemophilia, whatever it is. 
and there's no, nobody wants to. So maybe I can go and ask them for a blessing. He said, listen, the fact of the matter is I'm also a Mohel. And Rabbi Elimelech, he gave me a, 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 the formula for a powder to stop bleeding. I said, do you really think so? He said, let's see, let's make it. So he makes this powder, whatever it is. He said, let's see if it works. So he says, okay, let's see, I'll cut myself. He cuts himself, there's blood, he puts it on there, it stops the bleeding. The father says, okay, let's give it a try. It's my sons, my children. One of them is already three years old. One of them is already five years old. Whatever. So sure enough, they are there. He brings a doctor there. He brings a, whatever it is. He makes the circumcision. He puts this powder on and stops the bleeding. The other one, he makes the circumcision. He stops, stops the bleeding. He says, this is amazing. You saved me. You saved my children in the circumcised. What, what can I do to help you? He said, no, I'm just happy to do a mitzvah. I said, once again, once again, you said you lost a lot of money. How much did you lose? He said, about a million dollars. <laughs> I had it all on me, a million. He said, but Hashem takes, Hashem gives, it'll be okay. He said, one second. This business deal you wanted to do, who did you want to do it with? He said, you know, there's this guy, Mr. Groish, you know, he has the money. He says, listen, I'll tell you something. How much did you stand to make a profit? He said, I could have made even twice, even three times as much. You know, you would have made a profit of, let's say, two million. That would give you three million. He says, yeah, yeah, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. He says, listen, this Grace, I happen to know that he did the business deal with somebody else. But I'm going to give you 10 million. You saved my life. I said, what? He says, 10 million, take it. You saved my life. You saved my children. I see you're an honest person. You know what? Maybe we can even do business together in the future. You have to take me to this Rabbi Eliyamelech. I want to see him. I want to thank him personally. All of a sudden, he realizes, oh, this is what it meant. Rav Zusha, he said, Rav Zusha, my brother, he only saw until the river. But I saw after the river. It, Reb Zusha was right. He lost everything that he had in the river. But Rabbi el he gave him the secret of this powder that that made transformed his tragedy into a tremendous victory and success. <laughs> See you at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock.